This program contains sensitive content, which some may find disturbing and inappropriate for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, and welcome to Strategies for Strongholds. We're your hosts. I'm Michael Carducci, and this is Kezia Chisholm of Coming Out Ministries. Today, we're going to be talking about By Beholding, I Became Changed, and we're going to be interviewing Genevieve Smith. <laughs> Genevieve, thank you for coming. Thank you. It's really pl a great pleasure to have you here. But before we begin, let's just have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to hear Genevieve's testimony. We ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to come and to be with us and to help guide uh, Gen Genevieve's words um, as she shares with us her story. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so Genevieve, um, your story really begins with your childhood. Mm -hmm. And talk up to us about where you were raised and what, the, what life was like for you as a little girl. Okay, so I grew up in uh, Curacao, which is a little island in the Dutch Caribbean. Um, I grew up there with um, my parents, both Christians. Um, they weren't necessarily raised Adventists, but when I was six, they were baptized officially as Adventists. And so I grew up um, learning of Jesus Christ, going to Sabbath school, going to church. Um, so, yes, this was me growing up mm -hmm. in okay. a Christian house. So, the second question mm -hmm. is, when did you find yourself attracted to the same sex? I don't know exactly when that happened, but as long as I can remember, I was feeling attracted to, um, of course, at that time I was a girl, I was feeling attracted to girls just like me. However, I didn't understand the feeling. I was just very confused. I was like, why do I feel attracted to girls? What age would you say that was? Um, it could be around, already around 12. 12, okay. Yes. All right, so around puberty time. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, how, was your, how was the experience of living um, the lifestyle of a Christian and also um, worldly, you know, some of the things of the world that were coming into your experience as a young girl? Um, of course, it was, it was, um, it, it feels uh, conflicted. Mm -hmm. It was a conflict in my mind because I, um, I grew up learning that um, homosexualism is bad. It's, it's not a God's thing. So I would um, close myself, don't talk to anybody about it, um, don't share anything. And it felt very conflicting mm -hmm. because I was like, why would God um, say um, this is not okay? And I still feel like that. Why doesn't he take the feelings away? Okay. So I won't feel like that anymore. Mm. So it was very hard. Um, knowing that what I was feeling was not right. Mm -hmm. So um, eventually um, I started like having wrong friends, group of friends going out with wrong people and they were affirming me, hey, uh, whatever you're feeling is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So just embrace it. And eventually I rebel against my parents. I start going out, clubbing, um, doing whatever I want and end up um, being in different um, relationships with um, girls. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So what age was that when all of this was happening? I remember I, I had my first girlfriend when I was 18. 18? Yes. Okay. So by 18, you're now living in the gay culture yeah. and uh, this was still while you were in, in the islands? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what, I think that um, we kind of brushed over a little bit, so I want to go backwards. Was there ever a time when you experienced any kind of sexual abuse before you had attractions to females? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, I don't remember very clear, but I remember being molested by guy friends, mm -hmm. um, like maybe touching and inappropriate touch, of course. And how old were you then? I, I think I was around 10. 10 years old? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was exposed to that mm -hmm. and it didn't happen just one time, it happened several times and um, there was this specific person that um, uh, continuously um, molested me mm -hmm. and of course I became unsensitive. 
um, in regards to um, um, sex. Uh -huh. So I would f feel submissive in regards to men and just let myself go with them mm -hmm. and not say no. I didn't have the power to say no. Right. Um, but at the same time, I was confused with the feelings I had for a woman. Uh -huh. So it was a whole confusion for me growing up, being molested um, by men and also having the feeling re in regards to a woman. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. I was curious with that because um, you had mentioned that, you know, growing up in a Christian household and, you know, having this, um, the situation occur, this inappropriate touching happening, you know, did your parents ever tell you that, you know, hey, if, if something like this happens, you know, open up to us, like we really want to know what's going on? Um, I didn't have that trust f with my parents, mm -hmm. um, yet it was really hard for me to talk about it um, because I, I think I was, do I was doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. I was the wrong, I, I dealt with shame, guilt. Yeah. So of course, I'm not gonna tell them because I think I'm gonna be punished. Mm -hmm. So I never had the heart to tell my parents. Mm -hmm. Why did you think that your parents would punish you? Um, well, uh, because I'm already thinking that I'm doing something wrong. Uh -huh. So um, for example, I think I was thinking at the moment that um, if you do, if I do something go, uh, wrong, God will punish me. Mm -hmm. So, um, my parents would do the same thing. Okay. Was there physical abuse in your family growing up as a child? Well, in the Caribbean, spanking is very normal. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Severe spanking or just regular spanking? A regular spanking. Okay. All yes. right. All right. So in your mind, for you, it's like if you admitted to these thoughts and these feelings that that, that would be, you know, a, a thing of punishment. And I think I can relate to that because yeah. I remember that there was no way that I could tell, you know, my parents that I had these attractions. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, whether I thought that I would be punished, I knew that there was, you know, rejection coming if I were to share those, those thoughts and those feelings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it really does isolate you know, a person, doesn't it? If you fear to say what's really going on and what you feel, you know, you live with this constant secret, you know, um, afraid that if it comes out that you'll be punished or rejected. Exactly. Right, that makes sense. Um, so when you were now out in the gay culture, had you left God? Had you just said, okay, I'm done with religion, I'm out of here, and then you just embraced the gay culture? Well, I always... Um I always remember God. In the back of my mind, okay. I will always hear like the voice of God um, saying, this is not okay. You know, this is not okay. Or go to church. Uh -huh. You know, I always hear that voice in the back of my head, um, in, regardless, uh, while I'm doing something bad, I would, I would know that I'm doing something bad. Uh -huh. um, it was um, not easy, mm -hmm. of course, um, dealing with that. However, um, it was a struggle. Yes. Just because I know like in the back of your mind, knowing that the voice of God and just trying your best to remember what your parents had taught you. Yeah. Um, but then when you have these situations taking place, I know you had mentioned like feeling the shame. Yes. And just really trying to, I guess, survive in a sense, because mm -hmm. when you know you're not feeling comfortable with your parents, you're dealing with the inner shame. Um, but then at the same time, hearing the voice of God, um, you're just in a space where you're really just trying to figure out what to do during this time, but still moving forward um, at such a pivotal point because that is your teenage years, right? right? The teenage years, right? Yes, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. So it was a, t a constant conflict in my head. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, and I, I find that that's pretty common with many people's stories that they're finding themselves going to church and, you know, meeting the obligations or the expectations, you know, of your home and your family. And then at night, you know, going to the clubs and having girlfriends and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. That must have been like this dual personality. Was that confusing at all? Um, or were you comfortable with the whole thing? You know, there, there was all um, something that I always told myself, like, God is right. God is God is good, like he knows what he's saying. Uh -huh. I'm choosing to do this because I want to do it, not because um, God didn't say it. Uh -huh. Am I saying this right? <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> like you knew that God was still good, that he was still right, despite your own personal choices. Exactly. But you just decided to, in a sense, um, do what pleased you. Yes. Yeah, um, yes. I totally understand. Yes. So next question. Was the gay life fulfilling for you? 
No, not at all. It was not fulfilling. Um, I was trying to look for love, okay. of course, in woman. Mm -hmm. um, however, it was always a failure. So I would go from one to the other to the other. And I was like, is this even like worth it? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, of course, I didn't say it out loud, but when I'm home sleeping in my bed, I would think about it. Mm -hmm. Be like, is this, this is it, you know? There must be more. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that started to happen before I went studying um, overseas in mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. I started like um, thinking about leaving the lifestyle. Uh -huh. and, and that happened right after a relationship I was in. Uh, we broke up, I was hurt, of course. I was like, you know what, I don't wanna deal with this anymore. But of course I was still um, exposing myself to the media mm -hmm. that keep um, affirming the LGBTQ lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So of course, if you're exposed, that's what you're gonna feel, that's what you're gonna think. You're gonna take it as yours. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So eventually I got back into the lifestyle, even though I said that I was not gonna go back. Mm -hmm. And so how old were you when you left the gay life and then actually went back into the culture? I must have been around 24 uh -huh. already. And then were you still 24 when you came back to it or? Um, 28. Okay, so like four years. Yes. You, you walked out of the gay culture. Yes, and I then, walk out, walk in, walk out. Walk in, walk out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't know if it was 15 minutes, but it seemed more like it was a couple of years or a few years. So, yeah. so that was that was interesting. Um, the next question that I have for you: What was the different support system that was offered to you after this breakup, and while you were evaluating which which way to go? Well, after that breakup, I came to the states um, to do my studies here. Okay. Um, I went in another relationship. Okay. I was. Um, I remember being. Um, introduced to um, a dating app okay. and I ended up again getting myself into a relationship with a woman. Okay, so you know for the sake of, of people that are watching, what is a dating app? Like some people aren't even used to having a cell phone so that they're watching, they go, what's, an, what's a dating app? So a dating app is something that you, uh, it's an app on your phone and basically you tap into this place and there's a lot of people that are available to date mm -hmm. and it comes with a profile and you develop a profile and statistics and you can say whether you're straight, heterosexual, bisexual, whatever that is, right? And you have the opportunity to meet people that are similar to you that are actually in your area. Exactly. Is that right? Okay. Yes, yes. So when you started using this dating app, were you, um, was that when you were at a Christian college? Um, yes, okay. I was at a Christian college. Uh -huh. But of course, I wasn't walking the walk yet with God. Okay. I was still like one, one feet in, one feet out. Uh -huh. So I, I started feeling lonely. I wanted to be in a relationship and I got into a relationship. Okay. However, of course, again, it didn't go right. Okay. And so how I, long on average would your relationships last? One year or less. Okay. Okay. Yes. A year or less. Yeah. Okay. I think it's really important to uh -huh. add the fact that, you know, with you joining the dating app, it did play a big role considering the environment you were in. Um, the location of the school, we just so happened to go to the same school. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that the location, um, if someone is not used to it, you could really find yourself in a space looking for some sort of entertainment exactly. um, in the wrong places. Mm -hmm. And so I know for some people, when they're not used to a particular like quiet environment, all this, then they're gonna find themselves trying to find some sort of fulfillment elsewhere, um, even if, especially if that's in a dating app, because that's something just so quick and easy. Exactly. And um, yeah, so, you know, unfortunately sometimes if our environment, we're not conducive to it, we're not used to it, mm -hmm. um, we'll find ourselves just doing something to, you know, find some sort of fulfillment. All right, so from an old man's perspective, you know, I went to college over 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So for, for my understanding, what would you say is the percentage of people that belong to dating apps at your Christian university? Wow, you can say almost 80%. 80%? That's a lot. <laughs> a lot. Okay, would you agree? I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because, you know, especially with the pandemic, I do, 
I am aware that people have, or rather some people have become lonely uh -huh. in a sense, and so they're trying to find some sort of connection with anyone. Okay. Yeah. And you know, especially depending on their own personal relationship with mm -hmm. God, um, you know, even though we may be in a Christian um, schooling system, it does not mean that we are all necessarily connected to God. Yeah, um, exactly. And sometimes we're just sure. finding some sort of entertainment, someone to fill our void, and it's easily found on these dating apps. Exactly, yes. Okay, so from what I understand, you know, in, in the limited knowledge that I have about dating apps, um, my understanding is a lot of times it's really for superficial sexual um, situations. Mm -hmm. Is that still the case? Would that even apply in a Christian setting? Yes, it can apply. Okay. I mean, I, in my case, I wasn't really looking for that. Uh -huh. However, um, there are other friends that I know that will it, it will be a hookup the, um, app right. for them to just like... To connect sexually yes, with people. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right, well, that was a point that I was trying to get to, um, and, and it's so disappointing or sad to think that, you know, even in a Christian university that this is the reality that these apps are, are being used for, you know, sexual hookups. Yep. So Genevieve, now here you are, you're in a, you know, Christian school and, and the Lord hasn't let you go or you haven't let go of him. You got one foot in and one foot in this relationship. What was the precipice? What was it that really started pulling you back to God? Um, that breakup. Okay. Um, it was, um, to me, it was devastating. I remember I was depressed. And because of that, I started going to counseling. Okay. And I remember um, going to counseling for the relationship in order to make things better uh -huh. um, between me and the person. However, um, I realized that was not what I really wanted. You know, I've been processing and I'll be like, no, this is, this is not what I really want. So I started talking to my counselor about me not wanting to be in the lifestyle anymore. Wow. So um, because of that, she, she suggested me um, two groups, I remember that day. Two groups? Yes. Okay. Uh, one of them was a support group on campus. Okay. And the other one was coming out ministry. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, if you are ever considering um, needing support from any of these groups, just reach out to them. Okay. Which I did. I did both. Okay. Yes. All right. So tell me the difference between these two, um, these two. Uh, Options. Yeah. Yes. So um, at that moment, of course, I was heartbroken. Um, I went to the support group. I, I didn't really know what their purpose was or anything. Sure. I just needed support of people that feel like me think like me, uh -huh. right? So I went there, I remember getting accepted in the group and... Um, there was a process, you actually had to interview with one of the uh, seminary teachers, right? Yes. Okay. So... Um, make sure that you were appropriate for the group. Exactly, okay. exactly. So um, after that, of course, I got into the group mm -hmm. and it was, um, of course, when you are broken, you feel like, oh, these people, like, they care about me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, as people, they were caring. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, um, in the meanwhile, I was also reaching out to coming out ministry. Okay. And I started learning more about people that also going through what I went through. Yes. Um, and I was like, wow. So there is a possibility to come out uh -huh. of this. Uh -huh. And there's where I started getting hope. I was like, Okay, so God was impressing on my heart. I started like exposing myself more to different sermons. Um, I like prophetic seminaries, so I was um, looking at that too, um, health programs, everything. Um, and more and more, um, the Holy Spirit was impressing upon my heart mm -hmm. that um, my identity is in Christ. Mm -hmm. So I started, um, I got convinced by the Holy Spirit that this is not who I want to be anymore. Okay. And in the meanwhile, I was also going to the other group and I was feeling um, uh, conflicted okay. inside because at that group, of course, um, it's more affirming and we, we are free to use pronouns like um, 
I'm hi, this is my name, I'm a lesbian, or I'm gay, or you introduce yourself with the person you would like to be at okay. that time. All right. And I didn't feel okay saying, hi, my name's Genevieve, I'm a lesbian, because in the back of my head, I, I understood that um, my identity is in Christ. Okay. It's not about um, me, it's mm -hmm. about Christ. Mm -hmm. And I remember once that I was in my room and I was reading the scripture where God said, thou art mine. Wow. So I was like, oh, so I am God. Okay. So if I am God, I can be mine, myself or anyone else's. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So there is where I started making up my mind. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to... Um, stand up every time and saying I'm lesbian because I don't want to be identified as that anymore. Right, and the Bible says, mm -hmm. as a man thinketh in his heart, that so, so he is. Exactly. So every time you would say that, you were just reaffirming yourself back into the gay culture. Exactly. Okay. And I also remember that once you accept the Christ, you're a new creature. Mm -hmm. Come on. So if you are a new creature, why right. would I still identify myself mm. as an old creature? Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So that's where everything starts changing. Okay. Mm. So you had to make a decision. What about these two groups? One is affirming, and mm -hmm. then the other one, I, I, I like how you say it. You said one was talking about identifying in myself, and the other one was just lifting up. Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ, that's yes. right, that's beautiful, thank yes. you. Yes. So w w what did you decide? Well, um, I remember reaching out um, to Lisa, uh -huh. and Lisa, um, told me that she's gonna pray with me about it uh -huh. and pray about it. Um, so after much prayers, I also talked to, I remember talking to my mom because um, after I started um, wanting to be out, I started connecting more with my mom uh -huh. because right. I didn't have a good relationship mm -hmm. with her uh -huh. because of the lifestyle that I was living. Okay. But um, by choosing to follow Christ, my relationship with my mom also got better. Uh -huh. So. Um, she was also praying for me and of course coming out ministry was praying for me and one day i was just like okay i'm done i'm not gonna go there anymore huh. mm -hmm. so that's how it went that's amazing yeah. I, I still remember um some of the conversations you know that we had while we were talking and one of them was about these demonic sexual dreams yeah yeah and that was a real dilemma and you'd never heard anybody else that had talked about having those and and we shared that yes. information about how we had both experienced that. And um, what I find also amazing, uh, Genevieve, is that uh, we met on the back porch of somebody's house when we got together that time that I was at your school and and kind of became friends. And, and while you've been going to school with Kezia also as a student, what kind of support has been provided for you through Coming Out Ministries? Well, um, we I have been meeting um, with Coming Out Ministries um, um, every Monday mm -hmm. or every, um, I think it was uh, Thursday. Tuesday? Uh, Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Thursday. Um, or when coming out ministry sits in town, we <laughs> go eat <Yeah>. pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, that's right. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I, I didn't um, just felt support through the social media. Uh -huh. I, I felt like it got more personal too. Uh -huh. And um, it was for, to me for me it was enough support amen yes. amen that's awesome so what has helped you in this walk outside of the lifestyle um say that I, I guess what has helped you in your walk mm -hmm. to leave the lifestyle and because it's strategies for strongholds what's a strategy that you can give to people listening to help them also out of their walk okay um i remember saying that um there was one time that I tried to get out of the lifestyle, uh -huh. of course, but I was exposing myself mm -hmm. to the media out there mm -hmm. that keeps affirming me in the lifestyle, saying, that's okay. Or you see like girls kissing, or you see um, different things, people living together. And I mean, it's all over, the, all over the place when it comes to like media and what you hear, listen to. Um, so I decided that um, I didn't want to be exposed to those things anymore uh -huh. because, of course, um, what you behold, you become. Uh -huh. And I understood that. Right. So in order for me to um, 
um, be stronger in my walk with God, I had to, um, um, you say, diminish uh -huh. um, those um, social media, like movies, mm -hmm. everything, in order for me to be focused wow. in my walk. Wow. Because, of course, if you are seeing this lifestyle happen and you're feeling a certain way already, it's so easy for you to relate to that mm -hmm. because the feeling can be still there, mm -hmm. you know? But of course, walking with God is something that God does in you, mm -hmm. right? So I had to expose myself to things about God in order to find that strength mm -hmm. to um, keep walking in the way of God. Genevieve, that's fantastic, you know, to recognize the power of what influences like the media and other things, even friendships can have. Mm -hmm. Kezia, how does that relate to you? I mean, it's amazing because, you know, I love the fact that you really took the time out to seek out God during this time. You know, you had mentioned your counselor giving you options, right? And for you being in a space to realize, you know what, what would I, how would I want to better my relationship with God um, for you to be, have a heart of surrender, right? Um, coming to a space where you were willing to surrender the music, you know, the media, um, doing your part in knowing that there is work you have to do, right? It's not just praying the gay away in a sense, right? But you having to do your part um, and trusting God. Um, so I really just want to affirm you for that because sometimes um, some people could lose focus of that and just think, okay, if I've prayed for like two seconds and it's not gone, then I'm just going to go back. But you were in a space to be disciplined enough um, or rather diligent to say, you know what, I really want to seek out God. I want to seek out the truth. And so I'm going to go towards, you know, a ministry that is also affirming me to bring me closer to God. Um, that is Bible based. So strategies for strongholds is really about uh, taking account of the things that you're allowing into your mind. And, and um, I believe that sometimes, especially for us, it's about, uh, Lord, help me to love what you love and help me to hate what you hate. I wouldn't necessarily just choose to give up my music or my movies or those kind of influences unless I had the help of something stronger. Mm -hmm. And how has that been powerful for you? It has been powerful because the moment you get away from God, you're gonna go right back. Uh -huh. So it has been powerful, me staying away from all the influences from the media. So it is true that by beholding, we become changed and you were changed. What's really amazing is that God promises that if we cooperate with his word, that he can do great and marvelous things. How fantastic. So Genevieve, thank you again for sharing with us your amazing story. And Kezia, thank you for co-hosting with me today. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Join us again next time to hear more life-changing testimonies where Jesus offers strategies for strongholds. <laughs>